Okay, so let's take a look at some of the improvements at patterning. So firstly, what we've seen is greater consistency in how we do patterning at assembly level. Uh, we now have the same capabilities at the assembly level that we have at the part level. So if we just take a look here, we've now got pattern-driven patterns, sketch-driven patterns, and curve-driven patterns. So let's take a look at a couple of these. So firstly, we'll start with the curve-driven pattern. So the first thing we need to do here is choose a curve uh, to pattern along. We then need to specify the number of instances, and as you've seen in previous versions, we can link that to global variables if we want to. Spacing, we can also link to the same global variables from here, like so. Then all we need to do is choose a component that we want to pattern. So we can specify one of these items here, like so and also another one uh, to include in our pattern. Now just here we also have uh, the ability to control where the reference point or which reference point is using. So if we specify the component origin here, we can then also use an alignment method and apply those tangent to the curve, giving us a much better placement for the type of pattern that we want to, uh, that we want to create. So very quickly there we've generated all those instances in our chain system. So once, that com once that's completed, I want to show you just another improvement which I mentioned earlier in uh, the mirror component. We've now also seen that same visualization uh, translated to patterns as well. So you'll always see the seed component in pink and then any instances of the pattern displayed in blue. Okay, so next if we take a look at our pattern driven component pattern. So if we start this tool uh, the component we want to pattern is that sub-assembly there. Our driving feature or component can be a pattern here as well. So with a couple of clicks, we can very quickly get our whole subsystem created, like so. So hopefully what you'll see is that we've now reduced the amount of work required to, t to create these type of patterns. So quite a time saver there. If I just open another file here, we'll take a look at uh, some of the improvements at part level as well. So I don't know whether any of you will uh, sort of have done this in the past but here we've got a pattern displayed like so and you'll see if we select that pattern that again here at part level the seed is shown in pink and instances in blue. If we edit this pattern uh, and just increase the spacing such that we create multiple bodies within this file in previous versions of SOLIDWORKS, uh, it would keep one of the bodies only, uh, and we wouldn't have any control over which body that was, and invariably it would be the wrong one. In 2014, what we've seen now is an improvement to that behaviour, so if we create this pattern, creating multiple bodies in our file, we now get the bodies to keep uh, option, so we can choose to select which bodies we keep uh, from a list of available bodies here. And if we say OK, what we end up there is exactly what we want to do. So a really nice improvement uh, there to the part level patterning options. And if we just summarise what we've seen, so firstly we've seen some new types of patterns at assembly level, sketch driven, curve driven, pattern driven. We've also seen the improved visual feedback. Uh, and at part level we've seen uh, support for patterns creating multiple bodies with the ability for us to select which bodies we want to keep. Okay, so we're going to run through some other functionality now. So we'll just take a look at this in addition uh, here. So firstly, we've seen the introduction of a warning notification. So if you're in an assembly and you create a sketch on a face or a plane of a part without editing it first, you will receive this uh, warning message. So I think this is a really nice uh, sort of improvement here because it's something that's caught me out a few times. So hopefully what it will do is save wasted time and effort when you accidentally create that sketch at the top level. You do also have the ability to turn that warning off as well. We now support stick fonts. So if you are doing laser engraving, uh, water jet cutting or CNC machining, we can now specify a stick font. So it's just a single line entity that a tool can follow uh, for a path. We've seen some improvements to the recent document functionality as well. So we can now uh, open uh, files from there with the same options that we have in the file open dialog box. So we can specify whether it's resolved, lightweight, 
We can also choose the configuration and a particular display state as well. We can also drag those tiles into an open part, an assembly, a drawing, an empty graphics area, or alternatively into Windows Explorer to copy the file to that location as well. With plane alignment, we can now, uh, when creating a plane using a line or a face, the software will now align the x-axis of the new plane with the line we've specified. So it's just giving us a much more predictable orientation. Within the options page, we can now specify the default selection method, uh, be it box or lasso selection. We can also choose to update or not the model graphics when saving the files to try and speed up the saving process. Uh, the scroll selected item to view for the uh, feature manager design tree and also whether or not we show the new history folder as well. We've also got another nice option here when opening assemblies. We can automatically dismiss the messages after a certain number of seconds. So if you do find yourself opening large assemblies, uh, going away and then coming back and it being stuck on a warning message, we can now specify uh, the behaviour for what happens there. Okay, so Alex is going to run us through some drawing improvements now.